Robert, so what a, what a Israeli raid there just was. Wow. And they rescued some Israeli hostages. And uh, that's for people like us, just brings happiness to us. Thank God that the Israelis were able to get some of their people out. Our hearts are with just what's happened to the hostages and to a lot of the victims, what what still is happening to the ones that are alive. We can just imagine in terms of what's being done to them. And we are very well aware of uh, what happens to people in Islamic captivity. Um, so we found out a couple, so we're finding out quite a few things. Uh, and one particular interesting detail is the hostages are relating that they're, they were being forced to read the Quran. Um, let me hand that over to you. This is uh, a little bit intriguing, if that's one word to use. Well, you know, <clears throat> the uh, Islamic imperative is uh, encapsulated, I think, in chapter 8, verse 39 of the Quran, which says, fight them until persecution is no more and religion is all for Allah. And so uh, a lot of people say, a lot of Islamic apologists in the West try to claim that jihad is only defensive. But that would, if that were true, then the, the verse would just say, fight them until persecution is no more. And then when persecution is no more, you have no reason to fight. But it goes on and says, and religion is all for Allah. As long as there are people whose religion is not all for Allah, the Muslim is still obligated to fight. Doesn't mean every Muslim is going to take up that obligation, but that's what the Quran commands. And so, even in a situation like the taking of the Israeli hostages, the Muslims are going to do dawah, proselytizing. They're going to try to make the religion of the Jewish captives for Allah. They're going to try to convert them to Islam. Because this is at heart, nobody wants to admit it, Nobody even, very few people even understand it, but this is a religious conflict. And the jihadis know that if they convert any of these Jewish hostages to Islam, then the Jewish hostages will have a completely different view of the conflict and will likely be re ready and willing to send messages back to the Israelis that they should lay down their arms and stop fighting. <clears throat> and so they consider this part of the war effort to try to convert these people. And okay. they believe that if they give them, force them to read Quran and so on, then its wonderfulness will dawn upon them. And they'll be. Yeah. It's interesting the psychology of the guy that's handing the Quran over, because as we know, the testimony of many, many unfortunate victims of. Uh, Islamic sexual assault and rape is a lot of these victims that survived would say that he was raping me before and after reading the Quran and saying that the Quran was telling him to do this. So trying to get into the mind of the jihadist here. So, well, it's time for your the Quran reading and uh, just a, you know, a sexual assault and raping will follow afterwards. And now it's time for the Quran again. Uh, it's just... Uh, what do you what do you make of this that's hard for us to understand yeah because that's out of the judeo-christian tradition that's that's absolutely an abomination to behave in this way but in the islamic tradition it's in the quran you know you were saying well, okay for now we'll have sexual assault and rape and then we'll have quran reading it's all the same because the quran does sanction this behavior and it has very specific instructions for the fact that you can take the captives of the right hand, they're called. And this is all in chapter 4, verse 3, 424, chapter 23, 1 to 6, 3350, and 7030. And these passages make it clear you can take women captive and you can use them sexually. And that they are and they are available, they're allowed. That this is not something that is permitted grudgingly this is something that Allah is stipulating the mm -hmm. supreme god and so when they take these israeli women captive and rape them it's a holy act it's not that they're doing this evil and then turning to read the quran it's all the same 
it's one religious observance and then another because yeah. in the first place they're obeying what Allah says to do and then they're reading about it. Mm. And Robert, you know what just frustrates and angers me over the years and maybe even over the decades as I'm becoming old now, but just these people that just this endless amount of people I run into that right now while you're saying that they just go, no, no, it's just these bad extremists and it's it's just some some people that read the wrong translation and you know they they really need this willful blindness and Stockholm syndrome and I often again I'm repeating one of my earlier themes if it was your own daughters would you still let it happen if it was you would you still let it happen just to keep denying this truth and I think in most cases in a lot of cases with these uh progressives and leftists etc the answer is yes um like that there was a case yeah. that in germany yeah. a couple yeah. of years ago the young daughter of a uh, mass migration activist was raped and murdered and the uh family issued statements and i believe it was even in the program for the funeral that they were going to give money to pro-migration groups that they were uh, uh, not going to allow this to become, to be used by the so-called yeah. right wing, you know, and they were going to continue to stay the course and continue to push mass migration. I, uh, in my works, she had a psychopath in United in Hate. I have many explanations and terms for what lies beneath this. There's a very brilliant, courageous man named K Gad Sad. Uh, who calls this suicidal empathy, if I'm correct. He has a book coming out about that. Um, and he's brilliant in how he analyzes this. It's, it's, it's suicidal empathy. And, um, in our, and we also have many ways to explain it. Um, the, um, the historian David Potter uh, talked about negative identification. And it's very interesting, not necessarily in terms of this issue, but I, I thought about that a lot and applied it to our issues. And there's a lot of times when the progressive leftists that's so alienated and dispossessed in his own way from anything normal that he begins to love the Castros and the Maos of the world and the Stalins of the world. But he identifies negatively in the sense that they're living vicariously through the torture and through the killing. Um because really this leftism is also a sadism and also in the end a death wish. It's, it's so much dark stuff here, uh, Robert, and uh, you understand all of this very well.